Welcome to Online Sports Talk. Tonight, our Detroit Lions play the Dallas Cowboys, and it's going to be a good game. I am so excited about this game. This is the first real playoff feeling style game I feel like we've had as Lions fans in many years. And uh, I'll be honest, I was a little nervous, but seeing a lot of different things, you know, that different uh, websites have posted and things like that has calmed me a little bit. Um, I would say I've been about 50-50 about this game for a couple weeks now. Uh, I Dallas is one of those teams that, you know, they can look like one of the best teams in the league one week and the next week, they don't look that good. And I don't know if that's a Dak Prescott thing or what the reason is. Uh, but that is the something I have noticed over the last couple of years. That's kind of their MO. They that's why a lot of people think they're overrated. And I wouldn't say they're overrated. I think that there's just clearly some weaknesses. And so certain matchups probably work better, uh, whether it's for or against them. Now, with that said, uh, one of the stats I saw this week, uh, or that I've been seeing, is, you know, Detroit. 6-0 uh, and when they have the four of their five starters playing. That's Jackson, that's Decker, that's Ragnow, uh, and that's Sewell. And then obviously Glasgow would be the fifth guy who's really a backup, but good enough to be a starter. So when they have those guys out there, they're undefeated, 6-0 this year. Goff is playing incredibly well when he's got those guys. The offense is averaging, I think, 37.6 or 37.1 points per game when those guys are in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, they're averaging like 170 yards rushing when they have those guys. So the offense... When the offensive line is good, the whole team thrives. So uh, that is nice to see. Now, Dallas is built to have a lead, put pressure on quarterbacks. Micah Parsons is a phenomenal uh, edge. It's He's a player that I liked coming out of, out of Penn State and out of college. And... I, I wouldn't have been upset if the Lions got him. Now, obviously, that year I wanted Panay Sewell. You guys saw that on this channel. And I made that very clear how excited I was that we got Panay Sewell and how he was my number one choice. So, with all that said, uh, Parsons isn't known for being the best run-stopping edge, right? Uh, he sometimes, from my understanding, and I don't know the exacts, but I believe I heard someone say that Pars uh, Micah Parsons has issues disengaging blocks in the run game. Uh, so if you run at him, you have a good chance of doing better than, say, running away from him, you know? So that's something to take into account. So I think our offense tonight, here in the next couple hours when we play Dallas, is going to do really well. Um, wouldn't be surprised if this game tonight is a shootout. Uh, you know, we've, we've got all our guys. Uh, the only one that's obviously hurt is Vitae on offense. So he's obviously, his career is probably done. Um, but again, I think we're good. We've got all of our starters on offense. So hopefully it stays that way. Knock on wood. I know you heard the metal. That's, a, <laughs> that's something on top of my, my table there. But um, the defense. Now, the Lions defense, well, yeah. Um, we've still got a couple guys out. But we should be getting Aleem McNeil. We should be getting um, Houston, CJ, GJ back. So we should be getting all those guys back. Uh, you know, the defense has been better lately. Obviously, last weekend, a lot of interceptions against Denver. Um, you know, so again, I, I think our... I'm sorry, not Denver. Um, you know who I'm talking about. Anyways, a lot of good things on defense. You know, we had Kirby Joseph getting a pick. We had uh, Brian Branch getting a pick last week. So, again, I think our – it was Minnesota, by the way. Uh, I think our defense is going to do fine not giving up big plays. Uh, I think if you want to attack Detroit, you kind of attack them in the shorter game. Um, and right now, because with McNeil being hurt – we you can kind of run on us. I mean, we've still got Bugs, who's a great run-stopping defensive tackle. Um, but now we've got Bruce Irvin to help us in the, the pass rushing game. Obviously, Hutchinson is a solid player with over 80 pressures this year. Um, and he's going up against a tackle that's not the best. I think his name is Steele. I think he's given up almost 50 pressures this year. 
which is the most of any defensive lineman on Dallas, which, I mean, that's kind of a given. Uh, your tackles usually are one of the ones who give up the most pressures. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if Hutchinson can get to Dak. Uh, Dak is a bit older, but I believe he still can do some things with his mobility. Uh, I think, again, Dak can have a 350-yard day one game and then a 200-yard passing game the next. It's it's kind of hit, hit or miss. Um, so, yeah, again, I, I think with Melifonwu playing great last week, he's, he's a big body safety, you know, being able to step in there and you know, I also play the run. Obviously, Dallas doesn't have the best run game. The the thing that's on Dallas' side is it's a home game. I know their offense plays significantly better at home rather than on the road. Uh, is that going to be a difference? Again, I think it's going to be a run, a, a shootout tonight. They're, it's going to be up and down the field. I think both teams um, are going to move the ball. It's a matter of who has to settle for field goals as opposed to touchdowns. And when it comes down to it, I do think... Detroit's going to come home with a big, big road win in Dallas. And uh, it's it's funny because we were at the store today and I have never, and I've, I've been wearing Lions gear for a long time, you know, whether it's my, my Calvin jersey, my Joey Harrington jersey that I still wore up until this year. And I still do. I think I've worn it for a couple games this year. Uh, never once have I really had the attention I had today. My two boys were wearing their their Hutchinson jerseys today. Uh, and we were out. We went to, like, Walmart. We went to Meijer. We went to Target. Ollie's. Like, we went to a few different places. And everywhere we went, people noticed. People said something. In fact, when we were at Walmart, I think there were about five or six different people who tried to start conversations and talk about how, you know, this team has given them so much hope with, you know, Detroit football and how much they like Gibbs. One guy was like, oh, well, Goff has to hold on to the ball. And I was, I reassured him. I said, well, we have four of our five offensive linemen. The, you know, when we have them, we're undefeated and he, he plays different. So there's that. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is another stat I saw is that Dallas runs more man-to-man -man coverage on defense than most teams in the NFL. And the Lions do really well against man coverage. So I don't know if it's just they have a lot of man beater schemes. I don't I don't know. Uh, and all, all of Jared Goff's interceptions have come against zone coverage. All of them. Every single one. So I don't know if Dallas is going to adjust that and do more zone tonight. I don't know. I, I really don't know, you know. And it's just a game that I'm excited to sit down and watch here in a little bit. So... I just wanted to get that out there. I do think now it's no longer 50-50. I'm leaning more 70-30 that Detroit's going to win tonight in Dallas. Um, if they don't, I'm not going to be that upset about it as long as they don't go in and lay an egg and have glaring issues like, you know, Goff turning the ball over, you know, Dallas getting a ton of pressure on Goff. As long as those things uh, aren't there, and, you know, and I think, and it's close. I won't feel that bad if we lose, but I expect us to win. I expect us to win this big road game. And if we win tonight, we could clinch the number one seed for the playoffs in the NFC. I think there's a couple things that have to happen. I think Philly has to lose one, and I think San Francisco has to lose one. So if we beat Dallas and Philly and San Francisco both lose one, we've clinched the number one seed in the NFC, guaranteeing a first-round bye and home games up until the Super Bowl, If you know, assuming we win a bunch of games. That right there would be huge. Uh, I think the other thing is if we win out and San Francisco loses next week to the Rams, then we clinch as then we get the first seed as well. However, if San Francisco wins this week and next week, they're the the number one seed. So I think it's real like it's Detroit and San Francisco, and then Philadelphia is kind of in that spot right behind them because of their loss to San Francisco. So that's kind of the the positioning for deciding who gets the number one seed. So that's that's what I'm hoping. I think for Dallas to get the number one seed, they need an Eagles loss, 
San Francisco to lose out and they need Detroit to lose out, if I remember correctly. I think that's their only chance for Dallas getting the number one seed. Uh, but it, I think it is still a four-person race for that spot. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. Uh, let me know if you think I'm crazy. If you're watching this after the game or during the game, feel free to point out that I was wrong. Uh, but I do think it's going to be a shootout. Uh, I would not be surprised if it was a 30-something to 30-something game or even a high, like 28, 29 points to 30-something. Um, and the deciding factor being like, a field goal or six points or something or five you know some crazy thing that forces a team that ha you know they have to go for the touchdown rather than a field goal at the end um I, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happened yeah so anyways that's my thoughts hope you guys enjoyed this go lions one pride we'll see you guys next time bye bye